Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Now, last episode, we were left at this wonderful romantic image here, which, of course, is spoiled by everybody's favourite camp commandant. Semyon? Semyon? Where are you? The voice came from the edge of the forest. Damn. Worst timing ever. Semyon. It was Olga. She must have been worrying because I should have been back a long time ago. I should have guessed that tireless camp leader would start searching for a lost pioneer. I should have warned her beforehand. Oh, there is no point in thinking about it now. Lena looked at me questioningly. Being seen together would not be the best thing. Why? Let's go and tell her that everything is alright. No, let's hide and return to the camp later. Her idea was strange. Everything was going so well. At least something was starting to work out. Or seemed like it did. But what was that something? Okay then. I decided not to argue. It wasn't appropriate in such a situation. Olga shouted for a while and left. Let's go. Yes. Lena didn't grab onto my arm on the way back. I was a bit frustrated. No, oh, yes. But that wasn't certain enough to take the first step. We kept silent again. It was not typical of Lena to start a conversation, and I just didn't know what to say after everything that happened at the pier. She kept looking at the ground all the way back, keeping her usual expression. Still cute, though. What a bizarre change. Or, to be more precise, what was bizarre was the smile on the pier and Lena's words. She stopped at the square. Well... I have to go. Okay. Thank you. For today. Yes. Lena turned around and headed to her cabin, and I kept standing where I was. What the hell was that? That dance, that sudden change in the mood, and then everything was back to normal. It was like I was embracing another Lena in that short moment. That's right, she wasn't herself. She seemed a completely different person. Maybe I don't know her well enough. I had a feeling before that Lena hides something under her mask of shyness. It takes much longer than two days to understand someone. Damn, what should I do? Maybe I was just seeing things. <clears throat> Maybe I've had a bit longer chance with her. I'd have seen some more things. So, oh, good lord. I walked to the leader's cabin. The whole camp was sleeping, so there was no one to see me. So what? What was wrong with a pioneer taking a walk at night? When I was almost at the door, I heard a noise behind me. The branches of the bush near the trees rustled, as if someone moved there. There shouldn't be any wild animals around here. Well, apart from the Alana. Someone must be watching me. That very moment I rushed in the direction of the noise, I forced myself through the bushes and looked around. But it was too dark, and I didn't see anything or anyone. There was no point in going on. Even if someone was watching me, he must have gone already. I went back to the cabin. The light inside was on. Looks like she's still awake. Semyon, where have you been? What do you mean, where? And good lord, how did you fit those in that dress? Me and Lena have been sorting medical supplies in the infirmary. I told you before that I would do that in the evening. Really? When was that? Took you long enough? I was in the infirmary about half an hour ago. It was closed and the lights were off. Well, we decided to have a little walk. I'm fretting about you while you're out, having a walk. Well, sorry. I'll let you know beforehand next time. 
please do. Go to bed. It's late. I can't help agreeing with her. And hoping she's going to change in this room. It was by any measure a hard day. I was too tired to think about the evening's events, and I doubt I would have any decent thoughts. The main thing is that I have not a single idea how to react to all this. To Lena, to the camp, to this whole world. I practically haven't spent even a minute look on looking for answers. Moreover, I've been avoiding it as if the possible discovery scared me. And Lena. The time I spent with her was much more important than all of my attempts to return to the real world. I could worry myself for a long time, trying to understand what I did wrong and what I didn't do at all, but exhaustion overcame me. Day four. I woke up with a hellish ringing inside my head, and apparently during an earthquake. The ringing seemed to be coming from the depths of my consciousness. But after I came to my senses, I realized that the cause of this ringing is my alarm clock. Strange. Where did it come from? Why is it standing near my bed? Why does it have legs at all? Does it dance? It was half past seven according to the clock. Olga had already left and there was nobody to force me to go to the lineup. Thus, I can sleep a bit more. I closed my eyes, but it seemed like my consciousness had already had its coffee and was ready for a long productive day. I need to get up. I should plan my day out. After all, I need to find out something today. But still, nothing came to my head. Fine. I need to wake up completely and wash myself. On the way to the washstands, I met Jenya. What got you up so early? <laughs> oh, anything wrong with being up early? She looked at me as if I had insulted her, and then went back to sleep. No, nothing. Just curious. None of your business. Gosh. Jenya isn't very sympathetic even when she's in a good mood, but today she just looked furious. Perhaps I stole a bird. The cold water perked me up, the fog in my head dissipated, and my thoughts started arranging themselves. Curiously, I started to worry about finding a good place in the canteen more than about finding answers. I brushed my teeth and was going to leave when a quiet sound wafted past my ears. It's probably a squirrel or some other annual. Or Yolana. I heard another sound, this time a bit farther. I walked ten meters along the path, searching for the source. Nobody. Just the morning forest. I returned to the washstands and saw Miku, who was looking for something in the grass. Noticing me, she smiled and jumped up to me. Oh, hello, good morning. I accidentally scattered my tooth powder. I'm just trying to gather it all back up. The dewy glass didn't seem to be helping matters. Are you sure that's a good idea? Well, why? What else can I do? I don't have it anymore. It was the last I had. She pouted like a child who just had a favorite toy taken away from her. Here, I'll give you mine. I dug into my bag. No tooth powder there. Hmm, strange. Didn't I just put it there? I walked away for just a minute, and now it's gone. Listen, it looks like I've forgotten it. I don't want to tell her that I've it just gone missing. Knowing the sensitivity of this girl, it's safe to assume that vanishing household goods would impress her so much that her brain would reset itself in order to avoid overheating. Gosh, he thinks so much of this girl, doesn't he? Well, I'll be off. Yeah, cheers, visit us. I mean, visit me in the music club. I'm still alone there, but we, I mean, I... Miku's voice faded in the freshness of the summer morning far behind me. Getting back to the leader's cabin, I took my cell phone and looked at the battery meter. Enough power for a day, maybe even less. 
Of course, it wouldn't help me that much here, but still, finding a charger in the 80s would mean inventing it. I was going to head for breakfast when somebody knocked on the door. It was Lena. Um, good morning. Yeah, good morning. It's taken back a bit. The events of the previous day were still fresh in my memory, but I didn't really want to speak about them. You're probably looking for Olga, aren't you? Well, no. I mean, yes. Lena was her usual self, shy and easily embarrassed. That dance on the pier. Now it seemed no more than a dream. She's not here, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay then. I'll go. Okay. When Lena left, I thought that I'd been too cold towards her and so decided to be nicer on our next encounter. Still, regardless, the morning was shining and beautiful. The bright sun was shining over the space and time displaced pioneer camp, Sovnianok, warming its residents and filling them with energy to spend the day productively. Or in my case, to waste it in futile efforts to find an explanation for everything happening here. There was an unusually large crowd near the canteen, of course. There was no other place in the camp that the pioneers loved as much as the canteen, but why were they all crowding in the porch? I came closer to find out what was going on. It looked like all the camp had gathered at the porch. There were all the familiar girls, Olga and Electronic. They were having a lively discussion. I drew closer. Ah, Semyon. Have you seen Shurik today? No, what's the matter? We haven't been able to find him since early morning. Disappearing pioneers, well, that's something new. But he was with you yesterday? She was talking to Electronic. <laughs> yes, oh yes he was. So, you woke up this morning, and he wasn't anywhere to be found. No. Why didn't you come to me immediately? Well, I thought he got up earlier and went to wash up or something. Did he mention anything any yesterday? Interjected Slavia. For example? That he was going somewhere, for instance. No. What exactly is so horrifying about that? It's only 9am, he might have decided to go for a walk. You don't know Shurik. She looked over at me seriously. Well, no, I don't. I'd like to keep it that way. But I didn't see anything suspicious in this situation. Okay, let's stop panicking. We'll find him. Quickly, before he leaves. How could he miss breakfast? Yulana grinned. Exactly! Time to eat, anyway! The pioneers proceeded into the canteen. Yet again, I had no choice where to fit in. The only free place was at a table with Alyssa and Yulana, my favourite people. Take a seat! She pointed at the chair next to her. I sat down. Aren't you going to get your food? Good idea. I hadn't thought about that. Today's breakfast didn't look much different from yesterday's, but it looked more appetizing. Or maybe... I just wasn't very hungry. Or maybe I was eager to finish it off as soon as possible and avoid yet another Uyana plank. Want to go to the beach with us today? When? Right after breakfast. Generally speaking, relaxation wasn't on my agenda today, but if I was going to spend my time thinking, why shouldn't I do it while getting a suntan? Sure, why not? Ah, cool. She smiled nicely. I bet you're pr planning another prank. No, not at all. Yolanda waved her hands at me. She sure is. Alyssa grinned. She's always like that. No way. I think she's right. Nobody believes me. Yolanda took a tray of dirty dishes and stood up. Enjoy your meal. 
She said it in such a way that left no doubt. Nothing good awaits me today at the beach. Alyssa and I were left alone. Sorry, can't say it that way around. You know, I guess I shouldn't go with you after all. Why is that? Well, I've got something to do. And what exactly would that be? She looked in my eyes, and I couldn't even find an appropriate excuse. I don't even have a swimsuit. <laughs> try mine. Do you think it would fit me? Give it a try. I don't think it's worth the effort. Don't be a wimp. We'll find you some swimming trunks. Those words only added to my fear. Wait for me by the canteen. I'll be back soon. Okay. There's nothing wrong with waiting for her, is there? Finishing my breakfast, I left the building and sat on the stairs. Pioneers, all having their own breakfasts, hurried past me one by one. No one stopped me. No one even looked in my direction. It seemed they didn't consider me a stranger, but exactly the opposite. Just another teenager their age. Their comrade, you could say. A little odd, having no eyes, but there you go. I caught myself thinking that had I stopped to consider this camp and its inhabitants with not as much caution as I had the first day. Indeed, Alyssa was back in a couple of minutes. Really? Ready for what? She gave me the trunks. Though you could hardly call them trunks. They looked like pink boxes decorated with butterflies and flowers. Actually, they were boxes. I'm almost afraid to ask, but where did you get these from, Electronic? Too scared to put them on? Well, do you know? I've not the slightest intention of doing so. I appreciated a joke, but wasn't going to make myself a laughing stock. Put them on, she said roughly. Why don't you try them on instead of me? I think that colour of this swimsuit would set off your eyes very nicely. Let's make a bet. I had no desire to accept her bets. No thanks. Alright. You either go to your, the beach wearing them or you swim naked. Weighing the pros and cons, even the second option seems better than the first. I'm not planning to go anywhere at all. Then I'll tell everyone that you left those trunks in my cabin. Why would I do that? How should I know? She burst into laughter. I didn't want to argue with Alyssa, so I decided to go to the beach in the end, and possibly in the trunks. But okay, not in those flamboyant trunks. Okay, I'll be there in ten minutes. Don't be late. She ran off after saying that. I dragged my feet to the leader's cabin to get a towel and to hopefully find something like trunks. Olga was waiting for me in the room. Semyon, did you hear anything about Shurik? Same as half an hour ago. I walked to my bed and took a towel. Are you going somewhere? Yes, to the beach. Wait, do you have swimming trunks? You came here without any luggage, as I recall. Strange, that fact didn't seem to surprise her during our first encounter. No. So what will you wear? Good question. What? I don't know. Wait a minute. She walked to the wardrobe and unlocked a drawer. In a moment, she had a pair of normal black trunks. Where did she get those? Where did she bury the last owner of them? More importantly, why? Someone from the previous session might have forgotten them. Considering all the strange events in this camp, it wasn't really surprising to find men's swimming trunks in Olga's room. Thanks. The trunks were just my size, which made me worried. I got changed behind the cabin and went to the beach. A lot of pioneers had already gathered there, but I recognised only Alyssa and Yolanda. Come here. I walked over to them and sat on the sand. I see you found something better. She stared at my trunks and smirked. As you can see, 
Come on. Let's swim. I don't want to. Maybe later. I was not a fan of swimming. Suit yourself. The girls ran into the water. I did enjoy the view. Where, why did I come here? Why am I not out looking for answers? Should I care about it now? Sovnionok seemed normal. Certainly a lot of strange things have happened to me during these three and a half days, but not one of them, taken separately, seemed at all supernatural. Especially since I didn't get any closer to finding out so much as a clue. On the contrary, everything that has happened has only confused me more. What alternatives do I have? I won't get any truth from the local residents, though I doubt they even know it. Should I try to leave this place? No, you shouldn't. But how far can I walk, considering that I don't even know where I am? It turns out that my only option is to wait. After some time, the girls come back. Yelana had something in her hands. Look! I looked up and saw a crayfish, just a normal crayfish. Yelana lay next to me and started to torment it. I wasn't really paying too much attention. Leave the poor animal alone. Why? It's just a crayfish. So what? It has a right to live too. I'll rip its claws off and ask the cook to boil it for dinner. As if we have nothing else to eat, I looked at Alyssa. She seemed to be totally uninterested in Yolanda's fun with the poor sea creature. Tell her. What's wrong? It's a crayfish. It deserves it. Yeah, I'm starting to like Alyssa less and less. It looked like the girls missed on their lessons on nature in primary school and lacked empathy for the environment. Give it! I snatched the crayfish off Yolanda. Suit yourself. I was a little surprised when she didn't resist. I looked into the eyes of the poor animal. They didn't express anything at all, but I thought that if it could speak, it would certainly be outraged. Maybe it would even go to the UN Convention of Human Rights. Should that be crayfish rights? To tell the truth, I wasn't sure that would help. I took the crayfish to the river and set it free. Never mind. I'll catch more. There are plenty of them there, said Liana. No doubt about it, I mumbled. Time passed and I was getting sleepy. I fell asleep. I don't remember what I was dreaming about, if I was dreaming at all, but I woke up when someone shook my shoulder. Olga stood next to me. Good lord, how did you get those in that? Do you come to swim too? I asked, still half asleep. No. It's almost time for lunch, and we still can't find Shurik. The leader said, standing before me in a wet swimsuit. And? I want you to look for him. It seems like I'm the only pioneer in this entire camp. I was sincerely outraged. And I didn't want to stand up for some strange reason. Every time it was getting clearer that Olga considered me her errand boy to be used like a slave. Or vice versa. If I came to you, then I want you to help me. Why exactly me? And good lord, how'd you keep those in there? However, after giving it some thought, I decided to agree. After all, my shoulders and back got sunburned while I was sleeping, and searching for Shurik would let me get acquainted with unexplored locations of the camp. <sighs> okay. It was not exactly right to wander around wearing only swimming trunks, so I should get changed first. Ten minutes later, I stood outside Olga's cabin, deciding where to go. Okay. I see, you know what, I think we will probably leave this for now. Looks like we only have the two options anyway. And we will pick one of those and go look for it in the next episode. In the meantime, I've been Simon Parsons. 
Thank you and good night. Thank you.